Good morning. Welcome to Inspirations by Terry. I'm coming to you from um, West Africa, the Gambia. I hope all everyone's doing well wherever you may be in the world. Today, I want to talk to you about um, being chosen, being preferred. And what does that mean when you are chosen and you are preferred? Um, to me, it means that you have a lot more responsibility and you are um, you are the center of... Guys, I am so sorry. It seems like every time I get ready to do a video, here comes like two flies that just want to like torment me, right? And today, I'm going to try to get out. Sorry. But anyway, that means that you are chosen and you're preferred, right? Even though there may be so many other people or so many other choices, you were chosen. So with that in mind, um, let's get started, okay? Today, we're going to start with our first scripture, which is um, Second Peter, I mean, First Peter 2 and 9, which it says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him, which is Yah, who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's good. You are a chosen generation. So that was our first scripture. And now we're going to go to um, our second scripture, which we did this a few weeks ago, but um, it's important. So I'm going to touch on it again. Um, and it's found in the book of Psalms, Psalms 83.4, which many of you probably, probably already know. But Psalms 83.4 says, um, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance for they have consulted together with one consent. That means they were all on one accord, one consent. They are confederate against thee. Okay. So now we know that we are a royal priesthood, a chosen nation cure your people and we also know that there is a confederate against us to cut us off from being a nation so if you know you're chosen and you know that there's a group of people against you a confederate then you know that you are a target right because of who you are and because of whose you are you know that you're targeted so with that being said we have to be careful um, it's almost like when you are a celebrity or something that, you know, you have to be careful where you go, careful of who you associate, associate with, because you know that they're, you're targeted and you know that people are out to get you. So you're just, um, you choose wisely. You, you're careful of what you entertain. You're careful of what, who, who you associate with. Um, because you're peculiar, so you're not going to fit in everywhere and you're not going to, um, you know, everything's not meant for you because you are chosen to be set apart for a reason. Okay. So with that being said, um, with that being said, we have to realize that when we were, um, brought to the Americas and taken away in slavery and brought and dispersed throughout the four corners of the earth that the first thing they did was they tried to cut us off from being a nation. They tried to um, they tried to take the memory, um, erase the memory of who we were so we would not be able to pass that down to the next generation. So they, you know, they beat the names out of the people. We all saw the movie Roots. They told um, 
told the Kunta Kente his name is no longer Kunta Kente and you know he fought for it he fought for it but he you know he was being beat it was being beat out of him and he finally gave in and he finally said okay my name is Toby Toby my name is Toby um and the same thing in in society you know we come we were we were brought to a place that our ancestors did not know they were told to do x y and z and if they didn't do x y and z they would do so many things to break them um you know they would do horrible things to the men in front of their families or they would take the wife and rape her and do all kind of stuff and we we know the story but um the point i'm trying to make is that um it got so bad that a lot of people just chose to be quiet and they were just like, it's not even worth it. I'm not even going to pass down, you know, what I know. I'm just going to be quiet. I'm not going to tell them anything. I'm just going to conform. I'm just going to go along to get along because it's easier. And this way I'm not going to be beaten. I'm not going to be starved. And I'm just going to try to make life as easy as possible for me. Even though you were still being, even though they were still suffering and going through what they went through they do they chose to conform but thank god the most high that they're always in every generation there are um ambassadors and there are people who no matter what they refuse to conform they refuse to go along to get along they just stand out from the crowd no matter what and they are going to fight for what they believe in and they're going to take a stand for the most high no matter what thank god for those people and because we had those people we have a history we have um, a legacy we have a bible that we have to read and we have to go back into to see what they were trying to keep us from knowing what they were trying to keep from us you remember again i'm going to use the movie roots because perfect movie to use um if they found anyone who could read or write that person they wanted to kill them because they knew that they could educate the others or they could read the truth of who they were and that they would the the slave masters or the colonizers would not have rule or authority over them any longer because they would be able to read the truth and know the truth and know what is going on right so um with that being said, in the in the um, Bible, in um, I think it's in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter three, no Deuteronomy um, chapter seven. Let's go there. Deuteronomy chapter seven, um, cha Deuteronomy chapter seven, verses three to four. It says, "Neither, it says, neither shalt thou shalt neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son." nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But this shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. So in these scriptures, he's telling us that as a nation, as a peculiar people, as a royal priesthood, that we should not marry, make marriages with their sons and with their daughters because what that, what they'll do. Um, do what that will do is cause us to serve other gods and um you know and this is commanded of the the children of israel whom we are we are the children of israel we were chosen by god the most high yah we were chosen by him he loved us he chose us we are the nation that he chose and because of that, we have all this going on that's going on. We failed to keep the commandments. We fell under the curses. And here we are in this big old mess that you see everywhere in the world. And you see the, um, the Israel people, you know, impoverished, held back, 
held down, being killed, being murdered because of our disobedience. So um, getting back to when he's saying do not marry their daughters and the sons and the um, daughters don't marry um, sons don't marry their daughters and daughters don't marry their sons of other nations because when you intermarry into another race of people, another nation of people, oftentimes out of most times, you know, especially if it's um a Israel man, black man marrying into another nation because the woman is the nurturer, the woman is the caregiver, the woman is the one who's rearing the children, oftentimes that child is going to be led to follow whatever God or whatever image that the woman is following. And because you're, you are a chosen nation, you usually are not serving the same God. You really usually are not. It's possible, but usually you're not. So then what do you do? You have this union that God tells you, first of all, not to do because he commanded us not to marry their sons and daughters, but we do anyway. And now what do we do? We, we're, we're married to another nation. We're going through some stuff, you know, at work or we're being pulled over by the cop or we're being harassed or my brother just got shot because the cop, you know, um, singled him out because of his, the color of his skin. Now I come home to this woman, um, and vice versa, it could be the opposite around. It could be the uh, a, a black woman and a, a man of another nation. Um, and you come home for for um, comfort, to be consoled, to be understood, to be, you know, um, to be just to share what's going on. And it cannot be met with the same level of, of um, understanding because... These are different. You know, someone can say, oh, I'm so sorry. That should not have happened to you. Oh, they're so mean or they're so whatever. But it's not the same when you come home to someone who goes through the same thing you're going through and you can carry that, that pain together because you both are experiencing the same thing. These are both born from the same cloth. You both can empathize with one another because... You can't have empathy if you haven't endured that thing. So I don't understand how so many of our Israel men, our black men, are, and it's like, it's so on the rise. It's so rampant everywhere. And I know that it's because, first of all, it was commanded not to do. Second of all, Satan is trying to destroy the nation of Israel to keep us from being the chosen, to keep us our numbers low. And third of all, to create this whole breed of people that don't know who they are, that are, you know, I, am I black? Am I white? Um, how do I feel when I'm around the black people? They treat me funny when I'm around white people. They're looking at me, you know, like, so now you have these children who are confused unless, and, and this doesn't make it right, unless the white or the Asian or whoever the other nation is, is taking these people equally to the, to the Israel side and to this side, and they're giving them both heritages and they're teaching them both this, and they feel equal in both places. If that was possible that would be ideal but that is not possible and we know that is not happening and it's wrong so now we have a whole thing going on a whole mess of things because now um these children don't know who they are they try to identify with this or identify with that but most of them are confused as we are and we are israel and we know who we know that um we know who we are, but we ch we refuse to walk in what we were um, called to walk in. Here we are growing up, like for me, for example, I'm going to use me. Growing up in America, I always felt out of place. Always felt out of place. I never felt like I fit in 
anywhere. When I was in school, like my experience with racism and my experience in being singled out and my experience with rejection, I believe it started like in the first grade. It has been a long onset. It has been going on forever and ever, and it never stopped. And that is not healthy for a child to grow up thinking you're different or grow up thinking, well, why can't I play with you? And you're my friend, you're, and but her, my mom doesn't want me to play with you. My mom tells me I should play with people who look like me. When you had a friend and you thought you were friends, and then all of a sudden she tells you she can't play with you no more. It's kind of devastating for a child and um, that happened to me you know and going you know growing up and getting older and being in the fifth grade and the sixth grade and you see how you're treated different than the other students because of the color of your skin or what they were allowed to get away with you could not get you know you couldn't get away with it or you got a demerit or you got detention or you got whatever but if you were paying attention you saw these things most people just dismiss them or most people just don't um, acknowledge them. But I noticed it all. I, I saw it all. I saw the preferential treatment. I saw the um, racism at a, a, a young age. And I always wanted to know why is it like that? You know? And then I would have, I would see people, family members moving into predominantly white neighborhoods and their children getting into trouble because of the color of their skin. And I say to myself, you know, even if you have the best child in the whole entire world, do I want to take my child out of everything that's familiar to them and put them someplace where they are standing out or they're the one that everyone's watching because there is not even... There's not a, a, um, a group where they can kind of just fit in or blend in, but you're singled out because now I'm living in this plush neighborhood and I think that I'm doing something wonderful because, you know, I, I climbed up the corporate ladder and now um, I can afford a better place or a better neighborhood or a better zip code. But we subject our children to all this stuff that's not even normal even us the people who are um are are um promoted and now we have this new zip code and we are these black people and we go to these corporate places and we are in um this new neighborhood trust me even you that person are different you know you act different you come off like you're better than we are all one nation. We all come from the same place. We have to learn as a people to keep the commands of God, to honor his word. And we honor his word and we keep his commands. We break these curses off our back and we begin to build our nation back. But we can't build our nation when, we, when half of the people are intermarrying, having all these mixed babies, thinking that you come up because you married someone from another race and now you think that you're superior because that puts you, gives you a privilege or gives you, no, it creates more of a problem because when you realize that, um, that when we're divided, the more that we're divided, the more that they can, the, the power sources can rule over us. When we come together as a people, and, and coming together as a people is wonderful. That's all good, unifying. But when you come together and unify, what are you doing? What What is the purpose of us coming together and unifying? It's coming together to keep God's commandments. We can't leave God out of the scenario. He is the solution. Yes, we can unify all day. We can unify. We can um, march. We can protest. We can do all these things. But at the end of the day, what is it changing? It's not changing anything because the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, he said, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Only when his people, who is his people? Us, the chosen nation. He's going to heal the land when we turn back to God, 
when we go back to keeping the commands, when we go back to honoring his word, when we go back to staying with our people, when we go back to being proud of who we are, when we go back to um, stop trying to get in where we fit in and be um, honorable, be that Israel man that's looking for an Israel woman so you can have Israel children. How can you how can you raise your son to be proud and to be, you know, of who he is when you're not proud of who you are because you're going outside of your nation? I mean, there's no there's who else does that, you know, like we do it. There's a you you see an Asian man, he's with his Asian woman and he they're in their little Chinatown and they're doing their little thing and they're making their community strong. You see the Russians, they're doing their thing and they're um making their community strong. You see so many people, but here is our Israel man, our black man. I'm trying not to use the word black because black is a color and it's not a people. But um, our Israel men, you find them with everybody. They they just marry and 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 date anything and everything. Like the black woman or the Israel woman, it's not good enough for them. Where and it's been instilled in them and instilled in us that we're not good enough. That we are not enough. We are the chosen people. We have been hoodwinked. We have been sold a bill of goods. We have been told that we are the, the bottom when God made us the head, but we chose not to keep his commandments. So here we are looking to everything else. And because we don't keep the commandments, that allows them to rule over us because once we keep the commandments, that breaks all the curses off of, our, off of us. If we humble ourselves and keep the commands, it makes us under the safety of the umbrella that God created for us in the first place. And now we can walk under the blessing that he says that, that it protects us. But when we're out of the arc of safety and from that umbrella and we're here's the umbrella and here we are over here marrying other nations, breaking the covenant, not keeping the commands. That umbrella, when, when, when the murderers come to shoot you down dead in the street, you ain't safe because you ain't under the, you ain't under the, you know, you have to be, un, you have to be covered and you out here doing whatever you think you can do because you're big enough, you're bad enough, you've grown enough to do. And God's over here saying, come, come home, come home. He's here. We're here saying, why is all this happening? Why can't, why are they allowed to do this to us? Why is this happening to me? You think maybe you need to come back to the Ark of Cup, the Ark of Safety, and get underneath the umbrella of safety and say, you know, Lord, forgive me. I sinned against you. I've been trying to do things my way. I've been trying to make a life for myself and make myself good and, and, and high in business. When God said, if you seek me first and my kingdom and, and, and seek me, I'll give you all these things. I'll do all this for you only if you seek me first but we try to have a life over here that we're doing whatever we want to do and god's over here and say okay well i'll come to church on sunday but i ain't doing this okay well i'll do this but i ain't doing that so it's like you're just straggling the fence and you have no protection because i'm, I'm gonna tell you if you're lukewarm the bible says he'll spew you out so there's like you have no protection so the only way we win family only way we win is we stay set apart not hating because we we are not commanded to hate we're commanded to love but set apart for a purpose and what's the purpose to honor the most high to keep his law statutes and commands and to give bring glory to his name we were we are created beings we did not create ourselves if we created ourselves, it's a whole different story. We do what we want to do when we feel like doing it. But we were created for for one purpose, to bring honor to his name. And we're trying to do everything else except give him his proper place. You know, like growing up, I used to um, always, I always, always have a love for the Most High. Always, always, always. He was like, you know... Sometimes, you know, I had him in the, 
the passenger seat in the front seat but in the passenger side sometimes he was in the back seat sometimes he was in the trunk i'm like oh no not god not now god don't don't you know don't i don't want to be convicted holy spirit i'm getting ready to go do something so wrong like i'm getting ready to go get high or do whatever don't don't you know i don't want to feel your presence now just stay in the trunk until i get home you know and I'm always trying to put him everywhere in these little pockets. You stay here until I'm ready to pick you back up. You stay there until I'm ready to pick you back up. Until so I made a mess of so many things that I had to realize that the only time I'm winning, the only time that I'm succeeding, even when I'm thinking I'm succeeding somewhere else, the only time that I have true peace is when he's in the driver's seat and I'm over here. I'm like, okay, God, show me, direct me, lead me to the place that you want me to go. Surround me with the people you want me to be surrounded with. Help me to walk in your in your will. Not that I'm perfect because I get everything wrong, but because my heart is geared to be perfect. My heart is like, Lord, okay, I messed up today. But tomorrow I'm waking up and we're taking this thing again. We're going for it again because you're my God. And I love you and I want to please you. That is my desire. And that's what I'm trying to get across to you guys is that we have to know who we are, that we are a chosen nation. We've been set apart for a purpose. We need to love ourselves. We need to honor ourselves. We need to start thinking about our children, the things that you have gone through on your job, the things that you have gone through in life. Do you want your kids to go through the same thing that you went through? And if you don't, well, what can I do to prevent that from happening to my children? How can I protect their minds and their hearts from being, you know, discouraged at a young age and to keep them happy and vibrant and look into the future for something bright? How do I help my children? I can't put my convictions on you, but I would, my, my, um, my advice would be leave, go someplace where it's more of you than it is anybody else. So they can have a, a, a chance to grow up, not broken or not feeling like they have to compromise and have to, you know, be ashamed of their skin color or be ashamed of their hair or be ashamed of whatever that they're ashamed of that they can walk in true freedom and, and, and not freedom where there's a law saying this about you and a law saying that about you, but you can walk in freedom of, of expression, doing what you choose to do when you choose to do it because you have that liberty. And where is that at? You think about it, you do the research. But I'm telling you, we owe ourselves and we owe our children and we owe our families um, a change. You know, we owe ourselves a change. We owe ourselves to be free, to not being conformed in a system, in a society where everything, and I mean everything, is against you as a people. There is not one thing that is for you. And I mean not one thing. So I believe it behooves us to do some research, to get on our knees and turn to the Most High Yah and say, Lord, what must I do to, to get this right? What must I do to save my family? What must I do to just, you know, just, you know, I might not see it in my time, but how can I, you know, turn the course where my children and my next generation is not going to be affected by this foolishness and by this, um, this heaviness and by this deceitfulness that I had to suffer through all my life, how can I be a vessel? How can I be a tool used to bring about change for the next generation or even this generation? How can I help somebody that they may find the path back home, back to peace, back to reality? And what is the reality? The reality is that God is waiting for you. He's waiting for you to humble yourself and to call on him 
so he can begin to direct your path and show you what you need to do for your family, for the people that you, for the people that are in your sphere of influence. Family, the world's getting worse and worse and worse by the minute. It's time for us to wake up. It is time for us to um, save ourselves. It's almost like, you know, Noah saying the rain is coming and everybody was laughing at him when it was hot and 90, 100 degrees out there and he was building the ark. And they're like, look at this man. He's crazy. There's no rain in sight. He's out of his, he's just out of his mind. They laughed him, they scorned him, they did all these things. And then finally, finally, they started filling some little drip drops of rain. Whoa, wow, it's raining. And everybody's running to Noah, can we get in the ark? Can we get in the, the ark? And they're trying to break down the doors. He's been telling them, you know, he's been perpetually, you know, warning them. The same thing here. We're hearing the warning signs from everywhere. We are not safe as a people in certain places. Take heed. Hear the cry. Hear the warning signs. Don't turn a deaf ear. Hear. The, the father is calling his children. Hear. 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 Hear here um oh i got one more thing to, oh i'll say that for the next um the next time the next um discussion we will talk about is a strong delusion um i wanted to talk about that today but i don't have time so i love you guys i hope that um what i said meets you on good ground and I hope that um it was presented in a way that you could receive it um I love you family Israel you're blessed you're chosen God has so much for us we have to want it for ourselves we have to love ourselves we have to be proud of who we are we got to stick to our stick to our kind stick to who you are Love your people. Build family. And then with the families built strong, then we, a strong community. And then we can turn it into a nice, mighty nation. The nation that God wanted us to be. It's time for us to look within and say, Lord, you know, what is it? How can I be a better Israel man or Israel woman? How can I be, um, how can I be that better person? you know, for my family and then for my community, okay? So I'm going to close with this, Jude 24. It's not in front of me. Lord, have mercy. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling with exceeding joy and to present you faultless in the presence of his glory to the only wise God be power, dominion, majesty both now and forever.